Hello, my name is Zachary Levi. I should have a little tag. And I play Shazam. It's smoky in here. Yeah, let's pat on that. So, uh... <laughs> Creating a perfect sequel to what we did before is a very difficult thing to do. So we had a bit more time and a bit more budget to go and figure out how to, how to do this. Shazam became truly a fan favorite. People loved that tone that David Sandberg was able to find. Let's roll. Rolling, rolling. And that's what we're bringing back. Camera set. I was excited to return to this world because, first of all, I love it. I think the characters are great. But this is the first time I've done a sequel to one of my own movies. So to step onto this set again was such a cool feeling. Shazam 2, I was waiting for that script during the pandemic. And the day that it finally came in, I was super giggly. I couldn't believe it. We said immediately, but tell them we want to negotiate, OK? We offer up our powers of exchange for Freddy, but instead, we grab one of them, and that's the one we really use that to trade. Just talking to David as we developed the sequel, it was just trying to honor who the characters were, because you can make two dozen sequels. But like, what is the sequel? That is the honest continuation of Billy's story, of Freddy's story, in the Shazam world. When you're doing a sequel to a movie that already did so, so well, it's nerve wracking because you have to fulfill the expectations that were in the first one. And that's a big responsibility. Sam 2, let's go. Jack, how we feeling? I got a monologue. Do some of your lines for us. The spaghetti on the floor, nobody knows how to pick it up. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hey, Jack. 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 Was it daunting that David asked you to audition for the role again? <laughs> yeah, it was very strange. I was like, is this, I don't know if this is contractual, but I mean, listen, it's your movie, man. So let's, <laughs> let's figure it out. Fortunately, I still hadn't grown up. Uh, so it worked out. Zach is still just a big kid at heart, <laughs> which is why he's so perfect for Shazam. I wasn't even alive when all this shit went down. I don't, I don't even think there were sandwiches. It was so long ago, you know, but now in the present day, we have got sandwiches. The energy of the character of Shazam, just so brilliantly played by Zach. It was so fun to sit across the table and witness that performance in real life. I was very excited just to get everyone back together again, as well as to bring in some new characters. <laughs> it's funny to see Zachary Levi against Helen Mirren because, I mean, he kind of towers over her, so you think it will be sort of an uneven dynamic, but Helen Mirren, she has such presence that she can really be intimidating. You are very menacing. Like, you have a real presence. That goes a long way, for real. <laughs> I don't know what everybody wants her to be or thinks she ought to be, but that dope, awesome, cool, chill, grounded, giving, generous, fun, intelligent, talented, beautiful, ageless woman that you see in movies and you go, I feel like, is that really her in real life? That's her in real life. Better. Come on. With Helen, even if she's coming into just the second movie, she's a natural leader, a figurehead, someone everyone's kind of looking up to. Three, two, one, go! He's not very powerful. I have to carry like that. I, I'd much prefer just go, like, go away, little flea. We have a look at that. Three, two, one, go! One, go! Having walked into a set after she has left, <laughs> you could feel like there's a different air, like everyone just learned something. It's incredible fun. But I'm very jealous of my bad sister who gets to ride the dragon. You thought you were invulnerable, but no, magic can kill magic. With Lucy, she's really good at being intimidating, sometimes without even saying a word, with just a look. But I mean, it's funny that she can be so menacing on screen because she's just lovely off screen. Like, she was one of the most pleasant people I've ever worked with. Lucy likes some fun. She likes a little dance. So is Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, I am in love with that girl. Looking good. Okay. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> She is beyond talented. You lift your hands, nothing's happening, and then it'll basically be cut oh. after that. She's great. I mean, a big ball of energy. You'll need this. Oh, my costume is coming undone. Never mind, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Very friendly, full of love. We welcomed her into the family. That was fun. It's unreal. <laughs> I, I pinch myself daily. <laughs> uh, 
I'd only heard great things about this group of people, so, you know, I, I was just kind of nervous to infiltrate a homeostasis that had been established on the first one. I'm doing my best. But it was such a welcoming environment immediately. Oh, oh my God, goodness, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I wasn't paying attention, no, I'm totally so sorry. my fault. No, no, no. Are you okay? Yeah. Cool. I'm okay. You gonna walk me to class or what? Walk me to class? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was about to do. I'm just thinking about how I could... Take that on. I mean, I'm really good at watching that. <laughs> Her relationship with Jack in the movie is just such a joy to watch because they have such chemistry. They had fun together. And you could tell that they got along so well off screen as well. I've actually never been up here. <laughs> action? <laughs> my first so line excited. Is, my first line is action. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to work with her. She's a perfect actor. She's really, like, to a T, perfect. Jack and I have become best friends on this shoot. Please. I'm just brave because I have my friends. And I also run a big house. I mean, this whole cast is so tight-knit, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before, where we just look after each other. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the movie is the dynamic between Freddy and the wizard. Because you have lovable Freddy, who's this goofy kid, and you have this angry, bitter wizard. That half-wit Billy gave you the powers of Shazam? A little more sarcastic than Billy said, but hey, all good. Let's just get out of here. No, let's just get out of here. And I'm so happy that we paired them up, because we've already seen Shazam and Freddy have their dynamic, which is great, but now... <laughs> to also get this version of it really adds something extra to the film. <laughs> I look forward to seeing Jack throw him off. I'm sure Jaiman will be just fine and have the appropriate response. The seed? <gasps> yes, come, come, Jeff. You know my name is Freddy. Stop f***ing with me. I love that reaction you get to him. Yeah, you do that again. <laughs> it's so fun to improvise with Jaiman because he's so good. I love him so much. <laughs> Working with Jack, that was quite fun. He's a loose can, but wonderful and naturally funny. <laughs> Jack is someone who will crack everyone up. Sometimes he will ruin takes because he's just too funny. Take your powers, Billy. I hated that. Let's do it again. <laughs> so everyone loves him. How should I probably, should I just say, I can just say I'm Mary, right? Because I'm doing both, straight. I'm who I am right now. Well, um, I play Mary and Mary. In the, the first movie, we had discussions at the start if we should just have Grace play both the human and the superhero Mary, because she was almost at the right age. Okay, ready? Okay. okay. Double speed. Okay. <laughs> in this movie, it felt like she's definitely at that right age now. I look like the weirdest superhero in the world. Yeah. Should I smile while I do it? Yeah. <laughs> it did make it a little complicated, though, in that it was so easy with the other characters to just swap them out. You know, like, okay, now we have the other person. But whenever she changes, she has to go away <laughs> and put on the whole suit and put on new makeup and everything. On a day's work. What's it like playing the superhero this time around? Well, it feels very super. What can I say? It was exciting for me because it's my first time stepping into the suit and them designing something new with me in mind. Cool. Such a beautiful job was done with the collar, and it's very elegant. And I love it. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Did they put like a cooling system in there? No. So, <laughs> um, thankfully I have the skirt and if it wasn't for the fact that we're super, sweat would be fine. But when you're in Georgia in extreme heat, you do work up a sweat. It was funny because the first movie we shot in Toronto in the middle of winter, and it was so cold. Shazam 2 is going to be in the Bahamas, guys. Yeah. We were sort of joking about, well, Shazam 2, we shoot in, like, the Bahamas or something. And <laughs> what happened was we shot it in Atlanta in the middle of summer, and it was so hot. So everyone was sweating in their superhero suits. Hot. We have, um, like, portable air conditioning units that are everywhere, thank God. I'm gonna go stand in front of the air conditioning, yeah. yeah. The problem is everybody else is always really, really hot because of their sleeves. And I'm like, is it that bad? You're supposed to complain about your superhero suit in superhero movies. You're supposed to be like, oh, man, I can't pee in this thing. I can't, I, you know, but I can pee on my own. And I have. I don't need four people coming to the bathroom with me, like 
may or may not have happened on the previous movie. Okay. It was really nice to revisit the suit and make some upgrades, because it wasn't quite detailed enough in the first one. And we've been able to go back and actually do some things that weren't possible. For example, the design of the boots. This was sort of the design I always had in mind, and we tried to do something like it in the first one, but they fell apart on the first day. <laughs> and we had to quickly, like, just design something new, something that would keep together. Want to head home? Looking like this? But now that we had more experience and more time, we were able to build the boots of my dreams. They're awesome. Anytime you're doing a costume again, it's about developing the aesthetic, changing it enough so that it's interesting. Some of it was intensifying the colors of the costumes and intensifying the print and the gloss so that the camera could pick up on the details of the suit. It feels like it's definitely more a part of the greater world. The first suits were awesome. There were some things here and there. Like, as you might be noticing, this is an interesting little tidbit. This, which lights up, this magnetizes it to here. But this practical light was built into the suit, and that meant there was like a bunch of wiring that went through the suit, and that was not an easy thing to keep working all the time. Three, two, one, go! So now, if we want practical light, we just magnetize these on, and then, you know, computer graphics, and there you go. What else have we learned, fam? We extended the capes a bit. The first one, we sort of referenced the old school comics from the 40s, where he had a really short cape, but it felt like we needed something a little bit more modern this time, so we extended it a bit. And also just switched things up. Like in the first movie, he had a hood on his cape, which was from one version of the comic book. And this time it felt like, well, we already did that, so why not try something new? <laughs> See, better to test this out now, guys. <laughs> Here we go. That was one of the most exciting aspects of Shazam Fury of the Gods, to get to go bigger, to have bigger stakes, to have bigger action. Oh, yeah. We just sort of expand everything that's happening around them. The dragon's done land behind you. If I'm here, to go over a deer. And she hits that car, okay. she's gonna flip. over here while that's happening you look up she shoots again you got down so she hits that car over there okay. that flips wow. now you're gonna come out and shoot at her okay shoot at the dragon shoot at her <laughs> but she blocks it with the staff and then from there that's when you're like <laughs> Getting the, idea. getting the idea. So dragon coming towards you, but then you take off. So how much of this is all in one shot, and how much of oh, this is a big one? One way. <laughs> I love the scope of the environments in this movie. We go from Athens to the Rock of Eternity and the Library of Eternity to the Realm of the Gods. The God Realm and the Throne Room in particular that's it. It was one of those things where it turned out bigger and more impressive than I sort of had imagined. Sort of a partial set because our locations are just so huge that sometimes you could only build partial sets. And even when it's partial, it's very big. Like it takes up entire sound stages. Action! And then you fill out that even more with the effects just to make a massive environment. It's over, sisters. You can put anything behind you. Look. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do some blue screen work, and I think I'm going to be at the fort. Oh my gosh. I haven't been in one of those before. Everyone's telling me I'm going to love it. <laughs> but I'm ready. I'm excited. What's going on here today? Um, I'm on this thing. It's super comfortable. It's really comfortable. What's up, what are you doing behind the scenes right now? And action. We use tuning forks, which is a harness that flies them up in the air and lets them lay forward and kind of gives them that flight, can have them bank and turn. Shazam! And cut. Right there. <laughs> we use another thing called the parallelogram, which is kind of like a seesaw on steroids. It's by far my favorite part of the job. <laughs>
flying is just great. A lot of the things that we talk about on set is like, oh, what's your flying pose going to be? So some people have like the two arms up. I kind of have like a this sort of thing. Grace, she does like a hands out. Unless you're like a superhero, you don't think it's like, what's my flying form going to look like? So that stuff is always fun. So it's just a twist, and I'm kind of coming to camp. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'm coming in. Yeah, yeah. It's all about timing, and it's very technical work. Action. No, no. Action. Back, back. Action. No. And action. But it's quite a workout. And cut. You need a strong core to do all these things. Wait, I got to take a break. Sorry. I got no left. Got the left. We go back and forth with stunts all the time on trying to figure out the best way to have somebody fly 30 feet or so. We have to then match up what stunts did with a digi double. So all of our departments are so intermeshed. We can do whatever we want now with CG. I'm not even really here. here. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. no, no. It's, you're in the Matrix, bro. <laughs> right now, we have this awesome set here, but if I uh, load up these models, then I can show you what it's going to look like a little closer to the final. For this statue, they would have loved to build the whole thing, but it's going to be CG. So they can frame up for their shots, get all the actors in there and sort of look at these CG things as if they're actually there. It's based on an AR kit, and you can put in any kind of uh, CG imagery into the real world. So what we've done is we've used that to import geometry into the location, just move the pad around to help establish eye lines for the actors or to give the camera operators kind of a sense of where the top is. Oh, there's a lot of these guys, the unicorns. On the set, they've actually given us references to how the unicorns look. And that's just like mind boggling for me to have this technology that enables me to visualize what's happening in the scene so clearly. This could be your handle right there, right? Like that? Yeah. There's Team Unicorn. <laughs> it's really fun. There's the aspect when our unicorns turn to leaves, so we had to sit on almost like a dunk tank device. Are you ready to drop? Didn't I tell you a uh, unicorn exists? Yeah, didn't know they looked like this. That on action, we just kind of dropped. One, two, three, four. OK, that was good. Yeah? Yeah, that was yeah. Good. good. And all of us on our first go were a little like, whoa, that was a rush. Let's go. One, two, three, go. I was excited. <laughs> And then we had to take after take, and all of us were like, yeah, and then getting pretty comfortable with the, the dunk tank experience. The unicorn sort of way in there, and when she says hello, that's when you all see it. And then it starts charging. Running, running, running! Throwing the Skittles was so cool because I got to say, taste the rainbow, and it's such an iconic line. You might think you know what unicorns are. Nice and, and fluffy, sort of, ooh, it's rainbows. But we wanted to do something that you've never seen before. We love a good scare. These unicorns are frightening, naturally, because David Sandberg is directing this, and he has a love for the horror genre. You have some kids nightmares. <laughs> David Sandberg, I've never met anyone who loves what he does so much. It makes me feel like we're in safe hands here at Shazam. Yeah, we would really want to see those eyes. David's a very free director. He's not going to move on if it's not working for him. But short of that, you're really allowed to play and kind of bring him ideas. And dip out of the current, yeah. And then, and then jab him through. Exactly. Right, right, right. Back. Cool. He's a brilliant director. He knows his stuff. It's so beautiful. And he finds joy in the littlest of things. I want you to do a little, like, uh, like throwing yourself back. We love David. Action. And cut. As a Southern European working with a Northern European, we're very different people. I mean, Latins, we're, let me hug you, and hi, and how are you? And he's like, hello. And monster. He's the opposite of a noisy director, striding around saying, do this, do that. He's very, very quiet. Here we go, and action. 
has a great relationship with his wife, has made films together with his wife. I think the two of them are probably quite a creative force together. Working with my wife, Lotta, is what I'm the most used to. It's sort of how I got here. We, we made a little short film together called Lights Out that Hollywood discovered and then wanted to make a feature of. So that's sort of how I learned to direct people was with Lotta. So I'm, I'm very comfortable working with her because that's sort of my first. And I have this thing where I want to have her cameo in every movie I do. You can't believe any of this is real. but she died in the first one, so I was like, ooh, how do we do that? Charging up the car. Background, action! But changing her hairstyle and changing some things about her, and it's like, well, now she's a different character. <laughs> this is actually the first movie where my cameo is more than just a voice or someone <laughs> in, in lots of makeup. You actually see me as me, and I even say a couple of words in Swedish. <laughs> I got to do a little stunt work in the movie, which was a lot of fun. It gives you a new sense of what, what you're putting your actors through. It kind of hurts, it's kind of difficult, but it's a lot of fun and something I could have done all day. I came in yesterday to wardrobe, put this thing on again, looked in the mirror, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm Billy Batson again. We have a cameo by Michael Gray, who's the original Billy Batson from the 70s TV show Shazam. Action. Holy moly! Who expected almost 50 years later I'd be doing something in Shazam again? I never thought it. I love it. I already told him he's perfect. Thank you. After all these years, it makes me feel like I'm in my 20s again. Obviously, I'm not, but I feel like it. One Woman was in the script from day one. And I was very excited, but I also didn't quite believe it. I was like, are we really gonna get Gal Gadot to do this? <laughs> and I didn't really believe it until we were actually shooting it. It was an amazing thing you did. She was so pleasant and nice to work with, and she was so game to do anything. Stick to saving the world, kid. You work on a movie for very long and you don't get to see the final result until the very end of post-production. It's almost like seeing the movie for the first time and realizing that, oh, this did actually work. And it's such a relief. I love watching that final battle and feeling something. It's like, oh, I'm actually getting invested. And that's such a great feeling because it's been such a long road where it's been hard to really know, like, is this going to be good? Are people going to be invested in it? Action. But I think it's going to work. I'm so proud of our whole Shazamly and what we brought forth in this one. It's a really groovy group of people with lots of love. I just wrapped my superhero suit a couple days ago, and I had a little emotional moment taking it off because I was like, you know, hopefully I'll get to wear one in the future, but it might be a different one and there'll never be another Shazam Fury of the Gods. I'm gonna miss everybody. I'm like, when is part three? <laughs> I mean, the amount of people that have come to me and told me after I saw the movie, I just felt better. And I think that's one of the coolest things about making movies, you know, that we get to entertain people, that we get to transport them to another world. <laughs> and they get to have that little bit of escapism. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's a groovy job. You know what I'm saying? Well, in a superhero movie, you have to have post credit scenes. And we, we have two of them. One is where we poke a little fun at a different superhero universe. <gasps> the Avenger Society. And of course, we had to check in with Savannah and Mr. Mind. And once again, I get to play Mr. Mind doing some voice work. It takes me a very long time to get places, OK? They were such a big part of the first movie, and you want to know, like, what have they been up to? So it's really fun. <laughs>